Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this tutorial, we are going to populate a mesh surface with scales. You can see they are getting larger in open areas, while on curved areas they are smaller, so that way they do not intersect much and they have a nice flow running downwards the surface. Let's just start off from scratch. This is how far we are going to get. So if you want to see how these um, scales are made, you can just download the file from Modforce where I published all this. And the mesh we are going to use is coming from 3dscans.com where you can just download them for free without registration. Now, in a new document, we will just import the file. And I already downloaded it. My greyhounds will have a very, very large polygon count. So once I turn this off, you can see it's fairly dense down here. 2.5 million primitives. You can display them by right clicking on the eye icon. And my first step would be to clean the incoming mesh. Um, I do not want to remove anything geometrically, but I want to get rid of the attributes and groups that may be on there. And the next step would be already to fully reduce the mesh, but I will not connect it so I can just set the number to keep. And then I will connect it so the polygon count will be more manageable and at the same time still totally sufficient for what we are going to do. Now, once this has been reduced, we can uh, flip the mesh or rotate it around by 90 degrees and make it fit into a uh, two by two meters box. So the transform rotation around X can be minus 90 degrees and the match size will do two things. First of all, we will make sure it sits on the floor nicely by justifying it to Y min. And we will scale to fit it uniformly to not get any stretching and set it to two by two by two meters. Now, if your mesh is ready, we can now start to remesh it. And what the remesher is doing is, it's trying to create a very regular mesh with this size we've set here in the target size. But for our project, it's better to set it to adaptive. So that way we get really dense triangles in curved areas and rather large ones in open areas. Now, in order to restrict the tiny parts, we will set the minimum size to maybe something like 0.02, but feel free to play around with this. Also, if you want the larger pieces, to be smaller, you could play around with the gradation. So if you reduce this further, you will see that the mesh gets more uniform and all these parameters kind of interact with each other. So once you have found a pattern that looks promising, you can basically keep it that way and set the mesh size attribute to P scale. So this will basically define the average distance from each point to its surrounding points. So that's why the tiles will fit in perfectly in there. Now, in order to define the flow direction, we will measure the gradient of the points. And I want to let this flow along the Y component, which is the height. We will call this up vector because this can be read by the copy node and in order to visualize this we would just click on the word up and right click on the visualizers and set the marker to a vector. So this is basically the flow direction which is fairly close to maybe what fur or hair would flow like. And you can also switch it to the X direction or the Z component. While this also has a nice look, I will keep it at Y for the time being. And another vector, I need to orient my scales 
will be the normals. So the point normals are just sticking out perpendicularly from the surface like that and we can deactivate the visualization of both. Now you can see here that we now have point normals, the point scale and the up vector. And now it would be time to copy a tube to our mesh points and they should fit right away but we can of course give them more of a sense of direction by increasing or decreasing the radii to see better how they are flowing. Now it's also a nice touch to bring in or to visualize the colors so we would say ramp from attribute in a color node and set those to point scale and set the color gradient to infrared. Now we have to get a bit closer to our actual range. So we have the full spectrum of colors maybe ranging from the lowest end to something like 0.07 but it really depends on what you set your remesher to. Now in order to also see those colors on our underlying mesh we would use the attribute transfer which by standard transfers all attributes but we just want to restrict it to CD which is the diffuse color and in order to get rid of these steppings we would just set up the sample count to something like 10. It doesn't need to be perfect because in the end we are both, um, both uh, streams are going to be combined so this would be our final result. Alright, now you can interactively play around with this and change something like the density and it would get updated. You can change the gradation so this would make it more regular and this would make it more extreme and it will basically always work on any kind of mesh. Now, If you want to see how to replace these cylinders you can just download the file in Oddforce but it's basically being screened on the top half surface of this cylinder. Alright, thank you for watching.